Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the Process Explorer tool that is part of the Microsoft Sys Internals suite of tools. So we're going to just give you a little overview of it and then we'll do a demonstration and show you some of the uh, better features. So there are quite a lot of things you could do to it, uh, but we're going to go over some of the more popular things that people like to use it for. All right, so Process Explorer is a system utility that provides detailed real-time information about running processes including their resource usage, parent-child relationships, and loaded modules. All right, so what does it do and who is it for? All right, so what it does, it displays all active processes in a tree view showing parent-child relationships, provides detailed information for each process, including CPU usage, memory consumption, open files, registry keys, loaded DLLs, handles, and security permissions, among other things. It's also used to identify which process is locking a file or resource, so we'll show you how to do that. It offers a powerful search and kill or suspend options for stubborn or hidden processes. So once you find the uh, process in question, if it's something you want to stop, you could kill it or actually suspend it if you need to get a little more resources back and then start it back up again. All right, so it also offers visual real-time graphs for CPU, GPU, I.O., and memory activity, among others. All right, so who is it for? System administrators. Uh, they could use it to diagnose system slowdowns, high resource usage, or malicious background processes. Malware analysts and security teams. They could use it to detect suspicion or hidden processes that task manager may not show. So this is one of the big ones that people like to use it for. Then we have developers. Can use it to track dependencies, loaded modules, and performance impacts of applications. And then we have advanced users and technicians can use it uh, to diagnose the troubleshooting software that might hang, crash, or have resource leaks. All right, so here are some common use cases. So there obviously are a lot more than this, but these are just a few of the more popular ones here. So diagnosing high CPU or memory usage. So you could quickly identify which process or thread is causing slowdown or excessive resource usage. Uh, once again, detecting malware or suspicious processes. You could actually verify digital signatures, check file locations, and uncover hidden or disguised processes that task manager may miss. Find out what's locking a file or folder. So if you ever get one of those messages that you can't delete or move a file because it's in use, uh, you could use this to find what process is locking that file. All right, inspecting loaded DLLs and their dependencies. So you can view all DLLs and modules. A process is using, which is useful for diagnosing crashes, compatibility issues, or application debugging. All right, then it's also used for analyzing application hangs or crashes. So you can examine process threads, weight chains, and resource usage to determine why a program is unresponsive or malfunctioning. All right, so here we have a chart here comparing it to Task Manager and Resource Monitor. All right, so we have the feature here. Uh, what Task Manager can do, Resource Monitor can do, and Process Explorer can do. So you can see here for basic process listing, they all kind of do it here. Detailed process tree, Resource Monitor is limited. Handles and DLL view, limited on Resource Monitor. Uh, full capabilities for Process Explorer. Uh, process search by process ID or handle. Process Explorer is the only one that can handle that. File lock detection, Process Explorer. Malware or hidden process detection, minimal for task manager, limited for resource monitor, and excellent for process explorer. Then we have digital signature verification, eliminated in task manager, not available in resource monitor, yet available in process explorer. And then real time graphs, you get the basic ones in task manager, which you've probably seen. Uh, you get some detailed views in resource monitor, and then advanced views in process explorer. All right, so now let's hop on the computer here and try it out. All right, so we have our sysinternals folder here with all of our executables. So you want to run this as administrator. So you could technically run either one, because if you launch this one, it's going to launch the 64-bit version. So either one's fine. Right-click it. Run as administrator. Say yes to the UAC prompt. All right, so now we have our main window here with our various columns here. So these are all the defaults here, and you'll see it kind of jumps around a little bit sometimes, kind of like a task manager does. All right, so up here we have the process names, a CPU usage, a private bytes, a working set for memory, 
the process ID, uh, description. You could also expand these as well. And then the company name, if it's applicable. So not every one of these is going to have a company name necessarily. All right, and then of course you could come here, right click, select columns, or go to view, select columns. And let's say you wanted to add something else. Let's say command line, that's a popular one. So this tells you the location for the process here. So that comes in handy when you're trying to find something. So let's say you had something that was malicious here and you wanted to know exactly where it was. You can enable this command line column here and then go right to it. All right, so let's just go through some of these options here. So you have a file menu if you want to open the run box here. Run as limited user, uh, save and save as. You can even shut down the computer. Have it run at login, always be on top. Confirm your kills if you kill a task so you don't do it accidentally. Uh, tray icons, configure symbols, configure colors. This is a good one to go through here because it shows the colors for each one of these processes here. So like if you start something new, it'll open green at first. And then when you delete something, it'll go red. And then you can see here we have various other colors for other items and you can change them as well or set everything back to the default. All right, see so we got into the view tab here. All right, view here, system information, which we'll see in a second here. I show the process tree. If you want to see the entire tree. So you can see that one flashed green for a second there, saying it was just starting up there. Opacity levels, update speed, so on. All right, this is the same type of information you'll get when you right click, which we'll do in a second here. Then you have some search options here like find handle or DLL. So let's say we want to find what is locking this uh, Word file here, brochure, even though we know it's open in Word, but just an example here. So we'll type in the name of the file that's locked. So now you can see the process that is using that file is winword.exe, which is the executable for Word. Then you got the process ID and the type. Then you can see when we clicked on it here, it brought us right to it. Then you can right click on it, close the handle, go to the properties. And if we want to turn off this lower pane, we could do that. Or sometimes you might want to leave it on. So as you're going through your processes here, you could get information about them. Like so. Gives you all kinds of information, registry information, uh, file information, process information, thread information. And you can see here when you go through and click on different ones, it'll change accordingly. Then you have your lower pane view, what how you want to see, you want to see DLLs instead and it's kind of the same as just toggling through here handles dlls and threads all right then you can see here we have the processes for different users here so there are two users logged on this computer so right now we're with todd because that's the one we're logged in as and if you want to connect to susie you could do that as well this is assuming you know Susie's password and then you'll be able to do it from there. All right, so up the top here, we have save, refresh, pane view, system information, process tree, properties. So depending on what you're uh, highlighted here, it'll show the information for that. Terminate process, find. This one's kind of nice here. So if we want to see the process for a specific application that happens to be open, we can click on this. Let's say drag to File Explorer here. See, it takes you down to File Explorer down there. Let's go to Word here. It's a little tricky, you know, trying to get it to go over the exact application here. See, it takes us right to WinWord from there. All right, so here we have our CPU graph. 
system commit for memory, physical memory down here. So both of these take you to the same page because they're on the same thing here. I.O. And technically you could just toggle through from here as well or go to the summary and see everything in one location. And then as you move the mouse here, you can see what's going on at a specific time. So this is going in real time right here. And that's the same thing as clicking on here. All right, so now let's go to view and select columns. And you can see there are many, many columns uh, that you could choose here. So we just did the one for a command line. But you could do virus total, for example, which we're going to get to in a second here. Process performance. Process I.O. Status bar. .NET, DLL handles. Process GPU. So if you want to see GPU usage, you could check one of these boxes and add the column there. Network. Disk. Memory. And so on. And then speaking of network, so we have this real VNC, for example. If we go to properties and TCP IP, you can see that this is actually connected to the internet. Even though I don't have a VNC connection going, it's still going out to the internet. And you can see other information here as well. How much GPU or disk network performance? That type of thing. All right, so let's go over here to options and let's verify the image signatures. So this comes in handy when you're trying to find a specific process that you might think is malware or shouldn't be going on your computer. So if you click on this, it'll add it over here as another column. And this shows you the verified signers for all of these processes. And then you can make sure they all have a verified signer. And then again, you might have some processes that don't have it like these up here. All right, and then also from here, if you click on virustotal.com, and then click on check virustotal.com, this will go out to their site and do a hash comparison. So right now it's submitting it. And you can see these here. So let's scroll this over here. Cannot find the file specified. All right, and then these numbers here, so zero out of 77 uh, virus checking engines found the suspicious, so that's good. So if you have a big number here in the front, then you might be running into a problem where you have some type of uh, infected file or some kind of process that is running that shouldn't be. All right, so now if we go back here and check it again. You'll notice it doesn't turn off. So what you can do, go to Columns, you can turn off Virus Total here, and Verified Signer from here if you want to close those back out. So I'm not sure why it doesn't let you, you know, deselect them just by uh, going back to the same menu. All right, so now let's try right-clicking on something here. So let's say you wanted to search online. Let's say you didn't know what OneDrive is, for example. It'll take you to a being search for it. Properties, which we saw. So you can see, even though I'm not using OneDrive, it still has a connection to the internet going. You could check this particular one on Virus Total. You can see right there it's submitting the hash again. Comes out okay. Suspend, restart, kill the process. So let's say we kill OneDrive. Let's see if it works here. See it turn red and then disappear. All right, here you can set the priority to. If you want to set some more uh, CPU usage to. Uh, that particular process. So this one here 
is below normal at 6. Let's check something else at Chrome. This is set to normal. So you'll find that certain processes here have certain priorities, but of course you could change them. Then you could set the affinity to, depending on how many CPUs. So if you want to set just a specific CPU to run that process, you could do that. So this is just a virtual machine that so only has two CPUs, but in your case, you'll probably have considerably more than that. Another thing you might want to do too is replace a task manager. So if we check this box here, and close task manager because I have it open. Right click. Let me close this too, actually. Task manager. You can see it opens Process Explorer so you could actually replace it. And if you change your mind, come back here, do that, close it out. Now it's back to Task Manager. And then you'd have to run it manually, of course, which you could just do. You could also create shortcuts to this, you know. Like so, then you can right click your shortcut, run as administrator. And you're back in. All right, so you can see there is quite a bit you could do. So I just touched on some of the more popular aspects of it. Uh, but you could really get into it and do some pretty uh, nice things with it if you want to dig into it a little deeper. So this is definitely one of the Assist Internals tools that I suggest you check out. Uh, because it has a lot of things that you know the average user will find very useful. All right, thanks for watching. And be sure to subscribe.